hear the word of God. Amen. Do we have? Good, okay. 1 Corinthians 3, 9 to 11. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. By the grace of God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1, 5-11 In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders, all of you. Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud that shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that God may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on God, because God cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for something to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, yes. who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To God be the power forever and ever. Amen. 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 God, add, add us to see your words today. God's foundation for us is what this scripture is about. This connection with the things of God. And the connection of our intent, or how we connect with God. We are all given a set of tools. They're called the spiritual gifts. Thus, I'm plugging that workshop. Uh, it's important because those tools are important for us to use. And those tools help us to resist the schemes of the things in the world that aren't so good. And to help us to resist um, and, and give care for our lives. Okay? And I want to just remind all of us this morning that here at Valley Ministries, we laid a foundation in the very beginning with the Word of God. We began with, uh, with prayer and with an understanding that God hears us, answers us. But we just didn't sit in a room and pray. We put action to our prayers, right? Now, we have, um, we, we, we have this, this value of putting this action for care to, uh, of care to other people. We value that. I believe. I believe that we value caring for others. And we use the word care very often. Matter of fact, we have a team called the care team. And the care team uh, ministry uh, understands the foundation of praying for others while bringing God and blessings to those others as they make those calls week in and week out. And our care team uses compassion and action as they pray, but they also share resources as they elevate God. Because this, the, the team isn't about glorifying their needs or or anything other than checking in with you to care for you, Amen. to pray for you, to lift you up if you're in need. Now I know probably everybody in this room, and if you haven't got a call, then maybe you uh, ought to think about that, mm -hmm. has got a call from a care team member, or me, because I'm also part of the care team. Deb and Joe, this last week was their week, and I got my weekly report, and. 
there was like six calls that they made, called so-and-so, no answer, left a message. Called so-and-so, left an answer, left a message, no answer. Right? So that happens sometimes. We leave messages for people. I still pray for them. And you still pray for them. And we get the messages. And, we still keep and you get the messages. <laughs> and we get the messages. And that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Kendra's on the care trick team. Uh, Kelly um, Ferrens is on the care team. And Leora is on the care team. And myself. And so we make these calls and, because we can. Do they make a difference? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's important as we value one another. This is the foundational thing, valuing other people. So in the past, just a little bit of history about our church, we had a ministry called the Care Bear Ministry. Right? The Care Bear Ministry started by Beth and Mr. Jim Mettler, who's gone on to glory. We'll see him one day. Those two, in the early days, got their heads together. Beth uh, was a nurse and, well, is still a nurse, but, <laughs> and so is Jim. And um, they, they, they had this little powwow right before uh, uh, Jim was diagnosed with heart problems and such. And they wanted to do something for <laughs> other people. And so they created the Care Bear Ministry where they would pray with people. They would have these little bears with these stickers on them and go into hospitals and do all that kind of things. But it wasn't enough for them, right? And so they also said, well, we want to feed the homeless and we want to, um, um, we want to give out backpacks to the homeless as well. And so out of the Care Bear Ministries, the Backpack Ministry began. And if you don't know about the backpack ministry, the backpacks are sitting out there and they're full of, of items that, you, that people might need. And you put them in your car and when you see a person in need, you take the backpack and you give it to them. <coughs> and Janice and Phyllis have been heading that up for a long time, filling those backpacks. And, and all of you can participate in that. You know, when you go to a hotel, how they give you those little soaps? <laughs> Instead of, you know, leaving them, put them in your bag. Mm -hmm. And when you get back from your little trip, you bring your little bag and you put it back on that table, and they'll get put in the backpacks. Mm -hmm. Soaps and Bibles and all kinds of goodies can go in those back, back, backpacks. You know, another ministry that started uh, out of the backpack ministry is really the food pantry. The food pantry was the idea of to, to help people um, with food. Now, I want to tell you, saints, if you need food, and we have food, and you need it, I want you to make sure that you check into that food pantry because we have rice and beans and there's, there's some staples in there. So nobody in this congregation needs to go hungry. Nobody. And if you know somebody that needs something and we have it, we will give it. And indirectly, maybe, you know, Carol started the prayer shawl ministry, but we, because she started that ministry, the, our, the, care, the care bears kind of went away, and we used the little slip idea to, uh, attached to the prayer shawls. As the prayer shawls are being made, there's a prayer that they, that's being said as those prayer shawls are made, and we know the impact of that ministry. Amen. Yeah, I wish out of the 500 so far. And so, out of these... Um, out of this beginning, a humble beginning, many people have been served. Yes. And that's because people cared enough. The ministry that continues to this day to have this foundation of, of love and care. And I tell you, saints, if we want these ministries to continue, we need people. We need you. you we need your hands. We need your help. We need to put, put more action behind those things that as we help others. How can you put your care into action? I've heard it said that people worry about doing ministry because they don't think that they are capable or have what it takes. Well, if we think that we're capable all the time, then we're mistaken because, you know, God 
leads us. Mm -hmm. And God makes a way where there seems to be none. Amen. I've done things that I never dreamed possible because God was going before me and making a way. It's, an, it's, it, 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 it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. You know, we, each one of us are miracles if we allow ourselves to be used by God. If we, because really what it takes is to show up, as Erica shared, shared last week, it's showing up and it's putting one foot in front of the other and it's doing that thing which God has put on your heart to do, whatever that may be. The other thing that I know is that I know that it, it requires casting our care. Because sometimes we let care and worry and fret and all of those conversations stop us from doing, stopping from, act, from acting. Because we have that internal conversation that we aren't good enough or we have that conversation that, you know, God, how can God use the likes of me? I have nothing to offer. You are mistaken. You have something to offer. Each one has something to offer. And I, so I encourage us to cast our care uh, and when your anxiety and fear and frustration take, take over, casting your care and anxiety on God is crucial. And a part of that is, is tied in with humility. In our scripture today, it talked about humbly. You know, how many of you know, and have had this experience like me, I have been humbled. Oh, yeah. Oh, God yeah. Humble, has humbled me when I was too big for my britches. Right? Yeah. Or I thought, oh, I got a handle on this right now. I got a handle on this and I can do this and this. Uh-uh. You, -uh. Lord have mercy. Just think. If you if you think that you have arrived, and you, right? Then you you might want to rethink that. Right? You might want to just rethink that. Because God has a way of humbling us under God's hand. And then as we get humbled, we learn to clothe ourselves in the Spirit of God. That's what, that's what this scripture is talking about. It's about putting on God's Spirit, putting on the mantle of God, putting on the things of God, and not letting our flesh get in the way. And there's a process of humbling, you know? There's a process of casting your carry. cares. There's a process. You know, I know some of you, you say, well, I'm not going to do that again, and then you go right back and pick it up, <laughs> and you do it again, right? Some of us, we forget. It, it's like a fishing line. You cast it out, <laughs> and you reel it right back on in. <laughs> you reel it back on in, and you pick it right back up. Sometimes maybe you think you want to cast your care and then whoop, cut that line and let it be. And let the, the ripples go and disseminate. That's what I'm talking about, about casting our cares. We need to cast our cares and really let it go. So what kind of care do you need to cast today? In your handout for today, there's a place for you to take some notes and write down. What is it that you need to uh, cast to God? Your worries? Your frustrations at the bottom of the page. Take your burdens? Your anxieties? Whatever it is. Whatever it is. I'm going to invite you to take, write it down. I'm going to invite you to write it. You might not want to write it down right now, but I'm going to invite you to take that home and write it down. Because, you know, there's something about writing it down, about someone seeing it on the paper. I'm going to get, I'm a, you know what? I'm tired, I'm sick and tired of being operating in fear. <clears throat> right? Or maybe I'm, I'm frustrated about whatever situation might be going on in, your, in my life. So I'm going to write down, I'm going to cast my frustration back on God. And I'm going to let God handle it. So we all have them, you know. So I'm going to invite you to, to do that action. It's not just about sitting here with the holy, in this holy huddle this morning, but it's about you putting some action to it.
seen our care means have thrown off with vigor. I saw Lewis walking around this morning with the cane because we have some folks that are uh, tripped up. Speed yeah. up. I mean, I want to take that cane and whack. I'm sure some of you want to do the same, amen? amen. You want to cast that cane all right on out of your life. Right? I had sympathy canes. Sympathy canes. Woo, <laughs> right. Lord. Mm -hmm. It's a, I, I like this picture. You know, we, uh, I've shared with you about hiking Half Dome and doing those, those mm -hmm. things. We used to carry those big old packs, right? And before we go, we'd have to dump them all out and, and say, okay, purge this. I don't need that. I don't need that. You know, you can lighten your, pound, your pack by like 10 pounds, right? You think you need things, but you don't. Mm -hmm. There's some things in your life that you just don't need, that you need to cast away. But you know you're carrying that pack and you're going miles and miles and miles and miles. And then when you get off of the, when you get done for the day and you take that pack off, whoo, you don't ever want to put it back on. <laughs> you want to cast it away. That's what happens. Because you'd be tired. That's what happens when you carry your junk around for a while. <laughs> right? Yeah. So some of us have got a lot of stuff that we've been carrying around for a long time that we just do, that that's familiar to us that we need to get rid of. We need to cast it out. We need to get rid of it. Come on now, you know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> cast it out. Why do we do that? Because God cares for us. And it is our action. You know, we like to blame other people for our stuff. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to preach in the Midwest. We like to blame other people for our stuff. And when all we have to do is cast it over to God. If you're in a situation, it's probably because you did or did not do something. Now I know things happen to us that we need to take care of. Like, I didn't steal my own wallet. <laughs> but I'm, what I'm saying is that I didn't sit there and say somebody stole my wallet no I called Marilyn I got on the phone I got you take some action right you take some action you just don't sit in it and think oh everything's going to be alright no everything's not going to be alright unless you do something different Casting your cares. Giving it over to God. Let your frustration. You know, I, I cast frustration all the time. God, I get so frustrated. And so I need to let that anxiety go. And live in this peace. Come back to me, peace of God. Come back to me, peace. And you know what happens? You find peace. There's peace that happens. It happens. And so... I want you to write some things down. And then, you know, I don't want you to, maybe, maybe at the end of that, I want you to write down, there's a scripture I think I wrote down there, 1 Peter 5, 7, because this is the answer. God intends that you not be strangled by worry. You could add fear, frustration, whatever it is that you put on your list. God intends that you not be strangled by worry. Whatever it is, God intends for you not to be strangled by. So you get the picture. We are to cast our cares on God. Because God cares for you. Leslie made me a bracelet that says, I care. I'm no. working on to be To be to my, I care. Because I didn't. But not only do I, God cares more importantly. I want to close with this little story. During the 1930s, there was 250 men or so holding these ropes to a dribble. You know what a dribble is? It's like a blimp. That's what they used to do. Yeah, a dribble. An airship, similar to a blimp. And they were, their job was to hold it down from, from you know, Keep, keeping it from going away. And all of a sudden, whoosh, big old gust of wind comes up. Whoa. Yeah, whoa is right. 
top one into the dribble and then lifted it high off the ground. And some of the men immediately were smart enough to let go of the ropes. And they fell safely to the ground. Others panicked. And they were clinging on to the end of the rope. And the dribble continued to rise higher and higher. And several of them couldn't hold on anymore. And they fell. Nobody died, but there were some breaks happening, right? Mm -hmm. Because they weren't ready to just cast their care. They weren't let, they let go. Sometimes we hold on too long, and then we can't hold on anymore, and then boom, all hell breaks loose. And then one man, however, the only one who was left, continued to dangle high on this uh, on the rope for 45 minutes wow. until he was rescued. And the reporter comes to him and says, Hey dude, how'd you do that? How were you able to hold on to so long so long? And he said, I didn't hold on to the rope. I just tied it around my waist and let the rope hold on to me. So maybe instead of us trying to hold on to everything, we hold on to God. We hold on to God. And then in turn, let God hold on to you. Let God hold on to you. Amen? God bless you this morning as you cast your ears in Jesus' name. Great are you.